Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to bring up our esteemed panelists. So I'd like to welcome Kate Centauri from the Coca-Cola Company. Uh, sit here. Eric Korsch from Mashable Studios. And Chip Russo from Zephyr. Um, and because we're limited on time, we're probably going to just dig right in. Um, as Rick mentioned, I'm Shannon Pruitt. I'm the president of the Story Lab, which is an audience-led um, content marketing agency as part of Dentsu We Just Network, um, and have the great privilege of knowing all of these three in the various capacities in which they serve. So I'm going to let them give like a two-sentence introduction on who they are and why they're here, and uh, and then we'll get right into the content. Okay, great, thanks. Hi, I'm Kate Santori with the Coca-Cola Company. I sit on the marketing or integrated content marketing team <laughs> at Coke uh, for brand Coca-Cola for the U.S. Great. Eric? Uh, Eric Korsh. I'm at Mashable Studios. So the studio is responsible for all of our uh, video and art, animation, illustration across social platforms, TV, OTT. Hi, I'm Chip Russo I'm from Zephyr. Um, Zephyr is a technology company. We focus on making sense of social video. We use that technology to help align content for distribution and for targeting for advertisers. Great. So um, you can see that there are multiple sides of the business represented on this panel. And the idea in storytelling gets a lot of credit. Um, but there's a lot of work and preparation that go into creating the right idea so that the idea isn't just a subjective thing that people can either love or dismiss depending on you know who you are, what audience you are, and the distribution and the metrics by which you measured the idea. So there's going to be a lot of exploration and other trails around um, different parts of that process. But for today, to kick off the morning, you know, what we would like to do is really talk about setting the right foundation. And to do that, we spent some time actually in a pre-call sort of setting up some different core challenges and questions that we believe as a panel um, should be asked going into every content programming or any content marketing approach. So um, these are open for discussion and you can discuss them in your panel, but in order to sort of guide our trail and provide trail markers for us, um, we're going to focus on those questions. We're going to explore them in greater detail from different perspectives. Um, and then at the end, we'll sort of set up three questions to talk about in your moderated discussions um, after this. So let's kick it off. All right, so the first um, question is, how are you defining content in the larger story you're trying to tell? And what's the bigger story that will impact the business in a way that moves the needle? Um, so Kate, I'd love to kick it off with you. So why is this important for you as a client? Yeah, so I think at Coke, we think about <clears throat> content, everything is content, right? From our television commercial to a Snapchat post to our trucks to our product, um, every single piece of content that we produce is telling a chapter or a sentence of the larger story. And then we also have to think about our consumers, right? They're now becoming our storytellers, and we have to entrust them and see how they take our story. And then also our partners as well. And so for us, we look at it as all of these little pieces add up to the greater whole and how we can tell a story all summer long or all year long or even for the last. 100 years. Yeah. Um, and so, Eric, that's, it's interesting for you, right? Because you get approached, and Chip, you as well, actually, get approached by a lot of different entities to help them create content and, you know, brand storytelling. So, on the publisher side, and as the head of Mashable Studios, you know, how, how does that, how does that definition and sort of what is that larger role in storytelling for the brand when they're coming to you, you know, what is, it, what, what is important for you in that? So, it, it's important um, at a senior level where Kate is, they're talking about every piece of communication, every touch point matters, but as you go down you know, the food chain and if you're looking at a say sub 500k RFP on a media side like that whole process doesn't flow necessarily all the big goals that you have down into this single RFP mm -hmm. where someone is sitting at the end thinking, hmm, I have enough money, maybe I can get some content done and we on the 
publisher side are sort of often blocked off from understanding the bigger goals, what other materials are in market, should we even be making something original for this, or should we be taking what you've already got and funneling it to our audience. So there's, it's like a great ideal, but there's a lot of breakdown, a lot of places that your larger purpose breaks down by the time we get our hands on it, you know, unless we're having sort of multi-level conversations. Um, and you know, so and I think Chip, the same sort of applies for you, right? As a as a business, and and a lot of brands and and, cli and agencies coming to you for influencer marketing campaigns and content alignment and all these things. And how does that really impact? You know, the, how does that definition and sort of that larger purpose impact what you're able to do and how you're able to work with clients? I mean, our definition is a little bit more laser focused. Just due to our technology. So we focus, when we think about content, we think about video specifically. Um, and then I would just sort of agree with um, Eric in that, you know, there's a couple of levels. You have, you have the opportunity to do something really strategic and long term, and that's like thematic content that you might roll out over the course of a year, um, or you're 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 in, you know, maybe a faster turnaround. It's a more RFP driven. It's the sub five hundred thousand dollar level, and you're, you know, you have a specific execution, and um, so that's kind of how we think about it, but. I think it's important to dig into the details of what are the expectations, mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going to get to that later yeah. in the discussion. But in terms of what is content, we're really focused on video and telling a story, either in a, in a sh you know, in a, in a f not like a fast like one to three month range, or in a more strategic long term. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think the good news for this room, right, as we as you bring all these brilliant minds together and people that represent all different aspects of the industry, that, the, you know, in the follow-up, it's great to discuss, like, how do we get better and closer in the alignment around how to reconcile those things? And I think, you know, the second sort of question is really who is in charge, who is leading, who is accountable for this effort? <laughs> um, I hear laughter in the audience because <laughs> all of you have participated in that. Um, you know, and I think Eric... As, you know, because you even just the way you just kicked off the last answer, you know, I know you have some thoughts on this in terms of, you know, how this affects you guys and how it affects your work, frankly. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I got my first taste of it on the agency side for a number of years and, you know, things like a jump ball between PR or, you know, even your retail agency. Uh, up through creative AOR, digital AOR, et cetera. So all those different players uh, may or may not be involved in any sort of conversation that we're having with a brand. So um, you you may get your first, our first touch point coming in through a media agency, but you you know you're if you're smart you're aware. Mm, AOR is not going to like this. You know, they have not been clued in, so this whole thing's going to fall apart in three months. <laughs> like all those elements. So I, I think you know we'll, we'll hear the same themes over and over. But essentially, how do you how do you become a partner across that higher level learning agenda for a longer period of time and not just be a tactical three month mini campaign with KPIs that may or may not really help the big picture. Mm -hmm. Kate, at breakfast, you know, this is actually an interesting kind of segue into what you said to me like three minutes ago um, about how to be that longer term partner. Yeah. Like, how, you know, beyond like, don't just look at me for my budget. Yeah. Right. How, how, how do we start to close that yeah. gap? It's interesting because I sat on the other side of the table before I came to Coke and it, we, uh, at Federated, we had uh, an acronym which was like uh, a BCI, like a better reason for actually engaging with a client. And I was talking to Shannon earlier, and I said, you know, it's really hard as I get a lot of people who call me when I have the, an RFP. And that's the only time they call me, and I don't hear from them all year long. And it's actually really what I love about this conference is I get to sit and talk and like meet people and get to know them on a human level and really understand their business. What I love from partners is I want to hear from you all year long, and I may not answer you because like I got a bazillion emails. Like don't. Yeah. Case email that would come like, at the end. You know, unless we've had drinks, maybe I'll give you like a hey. Sounds good. Um, but I want you to look at everything that I'm doing and just give me two bullets. Like, hey, I saw your latest Super Bowl commercial. Here's two ways we could have helped amplify that. Yeah. Or here's three ways we could have done this. Or here's some research. Or here's an interesting article because I'm having conversations back at the ranch, that I call it all day long and I'm constantly pulling examples and so if you're feeding me information while I may not 
talk to you every day, you actually are going to be in my mind more often. And you will be the person that I'll call when I've got an RFP or I've got a problem and I've got, hey, I've got this program. It's got limited funding. I need a way to get it out. Do you have any ideas? You're more likely going to be the person I call who doesn't even get an RFP. And so for me, it's I would start thinking about from a publisher or an agency side or a partner side, how can I add value when there's actually no dollars tied to it? Because right. the dollars will come. Um, it's more of like a, just a longer sales process. Yeah. And you know, I think it's funny because <coughs> Chip, you know, I, we talk about this all the time. But like I always say, I always tell my CEO that I'm in the relationship business, yeah. um, <laughs> not the transaction business. <laughs> um, but you know, I think Chip, for you, right? You know, there's sort of different tiers of maturity around the content space. You know, that, like you said, that every touch point for you is content. Some people define content as the closest place in which the audience engages in a non-interruptive non or non-disruptive way. You know, and then there's sort of influencer marketing, which in many ways is still the wild, wild west yeah. now of content, yeah. right? And so this notion of who leads, who's accountable, who's coming to you, how are you reconciling all the different parties? How do you, how do how do we help get the best? opportunity and options by working with partners like Zephyr um, in sort of this very kind of crazy world that we live in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say just outside of Zephyr, I think you have to just look at best practices. Um, and they're super obvious to me. And it's, it really just starts with communication. Um, you know, there are, there like you were saying, there's a lot of touch points. Um, I would say for every deal that goes really well, there's just great communication. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you need to hold your partners, uh, if it's Zephyr, great, uh, accountable for leading that charge and being like the line producer. Um, but I think one of our greatest challenges is, you know, you have disparate opinions depending on who you're talking to because content is so subjective. So you have, you know, information coming in from, you know, maybe a media agency, which might be different than coming from the brand, um, which might be different than coming from PR. Are, right, um, and so as you as you balance those, I think you know as a service provider, you have to you know you have to serve everyone mm -hmm. um, without taking your eye off the ball of the greater picture, which is at the end of the day, the content has to be great, um, and if you can coordinate the different teams, then you can end up with a great product at the end. But um, I mean, if we're looking for best practices, I would say you know. I guess from our side, one of the things that we try to really do is understand who's leading the real creative direction, mm -hmm. and then also who's driving the budget. Like this initiative, if it's coming from one group <coughs> versus another, it might have a very different KPI. And you have to understand what that KPI is to be able to then um, be successful and then stay on brand. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I think, you know, to that end, right, there's this notion of Again, content is subjective, right? There are many great ideas, and great ideas come from everywhere. Um, and then you have a world where we are talking about personalization, and we're talking about scale, and we're about connect, you know, connecting one on one, and you know, all this responsibility that we're putting on these ideas and this distribution. And yet, you know, there is this notion of okay, well, in order to do that, you need to understand who your audience is, right? Yeah. Um, but you often find yourself in a briefing conversation where never been done before. I want to connect one-on-one, -on -one. I want to appeal to everyone, and I need this particular audience to engage, all come in the same brief. And so, you know, I would love to hear from you first, Eric, about, you know, how do you start to solve for this when you are starting to try to concept and ideate? And what's important for you in the briefing pro you know, process to understand that audience and how to overcome some of those things? And where do you get license to push back and be like, I don't know that we are. <laughs> we can do all of those things. Yeah, so many good questions in there. I mean, so one thing I try and think about is separate scale uh, because, the, the, you know, every media plan in the world could just be Facebook and Google and like you would not miss a single human <laughs> probably in the world you know but at least in North America so that's not like we no one can win on that right so what can you win on is this idea and to have an idea you need a quality brief and you need to understand if you're looking at or getting delivered a media brief 
or a creative brief, what is it? You should be trying to get your hands on both. Um, people should be willing to share both with you. Like that's a mission critical first part. And I think the publisher side, um, you want to try and take the authority to push back and say, look, you're calling us because there's something about our audience or the way that we speak to our audience that you know is intriguing to you and we should be able we should be comfortable with ourselves and our clients to say this is the way we can deliver our audience to you this is the way we can take them by the hand and bring them to you and someone else vice or box or finery can do the same things probably a lot of the same people they speak in a different way mm -hmm. and when you start to get the mandates and dictates around the creative is when the things start to go south because we make our living every day you know with a hundred fresh pieces of content every single day you know 365 days a year we understand why they like us refinery understands why they like refinery and you know obviously there are brand objectives but I think you want to take the authority the publisher wants to try and do that um, in a constructive way not not precious about the creative, but precious about delivering your audience to the brand. Great. Um, you know, Ch Chip, I think you probably deal with some of these same challenges, right? Um, and very, you know, you guys are going to talk about some work, all of you are going to talk about some work tomorrow that you know, in the influencer marketing space, you know, you have a great deal of responsibility and accountability to, to basically take on a brand's ethos mm -hmm. and try to bring that to life through people that are now being brand ambassadors, right, through, yeah. through their own channels. You know, how do you think about this um, in that space in terms of servicing both agencies, right, who are coming to you, different types of agencies, as well as clients who, you know, oftentimes have a very specific audience, but also want to have a little bit of the swing for the fences. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the best way to do it is actually just to look at their audience. So we, you know, we sit on YouTube primarily um, when it comes to our, our research and insights and distribution. Um, but we look at influencers across every platform. And so when a brand comes to us with a brief, they have typically a specific audience in mind. Um, we use that holistically because we're not a publisher. So we, we're not about like explaining what our audience is and matching it. We're more about really diving into the YouTube and Facebook platforms to understand what is the consumption of that audience? What are they doing? How are they differentiating their activities based on X, Y, or Z that's given to us in the brief? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we just look for themes, right? And then we use those themes as sort of the guideposts for creating content. So um, we'll, look at, we'll look at talent that resonates really well with that. Um, Whatever, whatever comes to us in the brief, right? We'll find, we'll find influencers who their audience maps really well, and then we'll combine that with research, and we'll, we'll deliver both of those two elements to whoever we, you know, end up contracting, and ultimately they'll produce something that, you know, hopefully is 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 really great, but will be rooted in in research. And that that's a great point. Is like that notion of the insight. You know, again, Mashables will be different from Voxes or Vices or whom whomever. But if if your partner can bring an insight that aligns with the brief and connects with your audience, and like right. here's a way that we can touch them that you wouldn't have thought through any other publishing mm -hmm. partner. Mm -hmm. uh, and you really want to hang on to that. And you want to build those connections down through your teams to make sure that like they're delivering all the information to the publishers yeah. or partners, mm -hmm. whoever they are. I think you make a, I think there's two things you said in that. And Kate, really, I love when we did our sort of pre-call, you um, said this so simply, which you know I say all the time in a much more complicated way that nobody understands. <laughs> so, you know, but you said it so simply and, and, and articulately, which was, you know, tell me something I didn't know before, right? Yeah. Um, and Eric, you know, I'd love for you to elaborate on that a little bit in terms of, you know, you guys sit on the other side of the phone, right? And But someone has to call you. <laughs> so when we call you, you know, I think, you know, Kate, if you can talk a little bit more about that piece, right, is how to get the best out of these partners. But then also, Eric, what you just said, which is how do you help that manifest all the way down? 
because I think there is sort of this 30,000 foot conversation and then there's by the time you have the people who are actually executing mm -hmm. there's a gap yeah. And this is the, the black hole where it all sort of has its opportunity to go, right? Yeah. So I'd love to I hear think, more. I think you both just touched on the value that you can bring, which is I, at Coca-Cola, I have an entire department that delivers data on who our consumer is. And so I'm not data poor by any means. Uh, I'm probably insight poor. And I need you to bring me insights. I need you to tell me something about my audience that I don't know. Help me find that white space, um, that little nugget of a teen boy in Texas who likes soccer and, 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 because I know that already. So yeah. what can you bring me that helps me create content around the white space, which then will hopefully empower you and we have to be more trustworthy to make content that I couldn't produce myself because you understand that 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 insight and that white space so much better than we do. Um, and then I would also say like challenge us. Like we write terrible briefs as clients and I think that's one of the things I challenge myself to is getting better is is right asking the questions. What's the layers beyond the brief? What's the KPI that um, we're actually measured against? And what the what the what are those audiences craving, right? So yeah. like once you contract certain missing? talent, like I'm, there's so much of it that I don't even understand really, just because I'm not in that age demographic anymore. But yeah. there are there's things that you know resonate, like unboxing. I would I would never watch an unboxing, but they're they're massive across the my four year old does. Right? <laughs> right? People love them. So there's nuances like that within every category, and if you can find those little nuggets, then you can create content that that from a distribution standpoint becomes all organic, which yeah. is really exciting. And it, even you, like you bring that up at the unboxing and, and you know, YouTube is one of my personal favorite platforms, but like that's not a sharing platform really. I mean, people share videos obviously, but more, you know, Instagram, Facebook are more uh, sharing. Mm -hmm. So even getting the info from the brief that would let you understand the KPI, am I trying to go for organic consumption or am I trying to get people to share my message? Like those simple things, if they're not in there, you end up you know, on the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing we all need is, like, the world needs is more content, right? Like, there's no <laughs> lack of content. Yeah. And they certainly don't need any more branded content. So what we need our partners to help us do is help us create good, useful, share-worthy content for those specific niches that you know about. And how do you do it in a way that my, I work with some of the, I'm privileged to work with some of the best creative agencies in the world. How do you do it in a way that a Widening Kennedy or a Droga 5 can't do? How do you find that niche for yourself and for my audience um, that delivers the value to me that I can't extrapolate from those guys? Um, and this is great, and we have about 15 minutes left, so I'm gonna, we're gonna scurry through um, <laughs> four and five, because I do want you to be able to talk a little bit about some of the, you know, yeah. a, a, an example of work that you think sort of exemplifies, or of why it works or why it doesn't, right? Because sometimes we learn the most from like, fit, hashtag fail, failures. Um, so the fourth pillar is distribution, right? Because content's only as good as those that may engage or see it. Um, so one of the questions we define is, why are you coming to us, yeah. right? Because we know in the RFP process, sometimes you're only as good as the last lunch you had <laughs> and who you took to lunch. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it's about we have a preferred partnership with you. Sometimes it's about we you are a partner for us, yeah. right? So when we think about you know this notion of Eric and Chip being able to say why are you coming to us? Yeah. You know how how do you help as the client? I'm going to start with you. How do you help as the client? Um, help to answer that question and help them be able to have the 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 right and the voice to say why are you coming to us? Yeah. I would say that should be the first question everyone asks is like, why are you coming to us? Um, because I'll be on, I'm from New York, I'm going to be honest, right? I'll tell you how it is. And I'll probably be coming and looking for something uh, cheap and good and fast. And you're like, well, I can give you good and fast. I can't give you cheap. And then you have to have the courage to say, this probably isn't the project for us to work together on, Kate. Um, but let's, let's think about what the next project is and have the courage to say no, because I guarantee you if you tell me no, you'll probably buy a first call next project. Um, because the last thing I want is a partner who's just gonna yes me to death and give me exactly what I want because I 
can very easily steamroll you into giving me what I want, but I need you to, to push back and say, no, that's not what we do, or that's not the value we can give you, or like, we can do that, but it's not gonna work. Um, have the courage to say that, and then ask the real questions, right? When it comes to KPIs, you both touched on KPIs, and, and um, Eric, you started to talk about it, is the KPIs and the RFP are likely different, so let's say it's brand awareness. I'm not measured on brand awareness in my job, and then if I'm thinking about what does my business need, I don't, brand awareness is nothing that Coca-Cola needs, right? <laughs> like 94% of the entire world knows what Coca-Cola is. So I don't really need brand awareness. I need to move some bottles. So if you can connect what the RFP says to what my actual business need is, you're gonna be set up for success to bring me a solution or a story or a content piece that actually helps me move the needle versus just delivering against a KPI. Are you able to, and say you take that process to get into the weeds with your partner so that they can learn over time what does move that second needle, move the bottles, yeah. so that it's, again, not like this little campaign that hits some media KPIs, but that can be measured over time. Say, yeah, a lot of people like this, but it didn't actually solve this other problem. Yeah. But these three pieces of content did, so let's make more of that. And that that's how yeah. you develop that learning agenda. But we often don't get all that full info, like how many people went to the site, how many people converted, how many people did whatever that final thing is. Yeah, I wish I could tell you I could connect one YouTube video to how many bottles it sold. I think that's an industry problem that we have. Um, my challenge to you as a partner would be ask, yeah. just ask, right? Like I get a lot of things that I'm like, I've never even heard of this person and there's like an RFP in front of me and I'm looking at their stuff, I'm like, I have no idea what they do. <laughs> Okay. Um, but if you don't ask the questions, you're never going to know the real answer because the RFP is, is so surface. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I think, you know, Chip, you know, you guys have an interesting um, model for thinking about distribution because, again, I think yeah. to, to Kate's point, you have to ask a lot of questions in order to get to the right um, answer, yeah. whether or not that answer is yes or no. But I think once you're in the system, right, and let's say you've gone down the road of, of identifying the right influencers and, and understanding the content they're going to create, when you think about the distribution and, and why are you coming to us, you know, what is some of that feedback and strategy that you deploy to help your clients um, understand, A, why they should be coming to you, yep. right, um, and then how you're going to help their content connect with their audience? Yeah, so uh, without distribution or scale, then you just wasted a lot of people's time. I mean, <laughs> you could create something that's great that nobody sees, then what's yeah. the point, really? Mm -hmm. um, so we, we do a lot of things when it comes to distribution. First, we pick the right influencers from the start. Uh, we use data to do that, and we use uh, engagement as sort of the guiding factor of everything. So um, I don't really care how many subscribers you have. What I care about is when you post something, does, your, does it resonate with your audience? Do they comment? Do they like? Do they share? It, right so if your audience is engaged when you when you promote content then when you work with them from a brand funded perspective their audience assuming that you know you do research and you get the right theme and it's authentic to their voice etc like some of the I think the basics now um, but if you do all of those right things and you're speaking to someone that has a big enough audience that engages, then it will be successful. So I think of distribution, like first and foremost, like pick the right partners, like pick the right talent, and let distribution be, you know, the vast majority of it be organic. Mm -hmm. um, but then our approach to YouTube is different as well. Like we look at every video every day and, and what we do is, align content so if you're um, if, if we do you know a piece of content about a skateboarder you know with a can of coke or whatnot and does a trick then we'll align that with skateboarding content so the 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 audience is in the right mindset when they see the the content and they match it to the content that they're expecting to see or that they've searched for mm -hmm. and then from a tactic standpoint we look at it similar to like I guess the way that VCs would look at the marketplace right they they invest in the content up front or they invest in a company up front and then what we do is or one of our recommendations with brands is always to hold back a little bit of the budget Mm -hmm. and watch for the winners. So we'll watch the content that performs really well organically and then we'll fuel that you know, with paid distribution, typically through YouTube, um, and then we'll match, we'll use that content alignment so that, again, the user's in the right mindset when they're watching that mm -hmm. brand-funded content. Um, but we're only distributing the, the winning pieces. Okay. He, he brings up something that's that's 
drives me crazy that is like <laughs> this. Uh, well, it's it's kind of important because you know we're talking up here again, yeah. and then you get down on the ground. So say we're doing a program with ten pieces of content, whatever they are, and there's a notion at this sort of box checking level, like that all the content will perform equally, mm -hmm. which is crazy, right? right? That's not true for NBC, ABC, Mashable, anybody, right? You try things, you write books, some books do better, some books do worse. Mm -hmm. So there's this optics notion like, well, are you telling me that some of the articles or infographs <laughs> or videos won't be good? I'm like, yeah, we do a hundred a day. Yeah. How many viral, we don't have a hundred viral hits a day. No, you know, so we're connecting and we're writing stories stories in our brand voice, they're not all going to be viral. And you wait for the winners, and you put the money behind the winners. But that other strategy has you funding losers, like shoving bad content in front of people who have shown you they are not interested. Yeah. Right. And like that's what can happen on the ground when you don't have the communication or the ability to say, we're doing 10, three will be good. We don't know which three yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, whatever your, your process is, you have yours, we have ours. Yeah. But, but to set that expectation from the beginning would be helpful. But you know, imagine saying that when you're trying to win the job. Trying to win the business. We're going to yeah. have a 30% hit rate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be, you're going to love it. Yeah, but that's uh, the truth. Yeah. yeah, and you will love it if you hit the rate. Yeah, right? and like it'll work easy. better. Yeah. Right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind the last two, right? So the, the, the fifth one is what cape kind of what you're saying, right? What KPI is this program or initiative responsible for? And then what KPI are you responsible for as a business, right? What are you, how is the person that is calling you on the phone incentivized to actually you know, get their paycheck and their bonus and all of their things, right? Um, and so I'm going to collapse that with also tell us about a piece of work yep. that you believe that setting the right foundation was either critical in delivering success or actually is that by understanding what the foundation was, you're able to define why something didn't work as well as it could have, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, Eric, because you were just sort of talking about that, I'm actually going to start with you, and then um, and then we're going to go to Chip, and then we'll round it out with Kate, and then I think we'll be done. Cool. So I guess um, I I prefer to think of the stories that don't work that well to as better learning agendas for us. And I do recently, you know, won't name Klein or anything, but you should you should call people out. I'm yeah, uh, <laughs> on my last day I will. Um, but essentially, you know, showing us a, a video that was an organic, organically made video that was appealing to them, and they wanted to replicate that. And the problem is they wanted to have it be about their product and have people say things that were clearly not going to happen, <laughs> not be organic, not be authentic. And we ended up ultimately caving and saying, we'll do it. The, the, one of yours was, well, we'll do it, but it won't work, <laughs> right? Which we did say, but we did, which was kind of a mistake from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in every level, you know, we tried every which way. We tried calling high, emailing, um, and the whole process just broke down from the start because we were shown something, trying to hit a goal against an organic piece of content, right? Like, you know, make me a Charlie bit my finger, but include this product. <laughs> like, you know, bad, <laughs> bad idea. Um, <laughs> So, you know, that's my, my story of us having to have a little more authority yeah. and saying, no thanks, we should not do this project for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, Chip, do you want to talk a little bit about? Yeah, so, um, yeah. so I'll spend a little more time on sort of the KPIs, um, and then I'll tell. Yeah, and you got to have to talk A back. brief little snippet <laughs> of, about a. Unless Todd and Rick are willing to give us study. an extra two minutes. Yeah. Um, so KPIs, I think, are a challenge for everybody right. because you've got because you've got um, you've got this big brand goal, right, to move bottles, and then um, you're trying to measure what you're doing because you know digital media has to be accountable for everything, and yeah. just because we can, um, and so you have disparate um, entities, each one of them rewarded for different things, and so bringing that together is a challenge. So I, I would say, like as a takeaway, that that's one thing that if you're gonna 
fund content, then be clear, at least amongst all your own <laughs> parties and, and ultimately when you deliver that message of what's really important. Um, and, and it can be a couple things, mm -hmm. right? It can be move bottles and move sentiment or, or, or whatnot. Um, but but just be clear from the start because you'll you'll find that if if it's a sub 500 you know more RFP driven um, or, or more media driven initiative and it's a content piece yeah. then, then people will really be focused on um, automated metrics uh, you know that that won't necessarily move bottles but will look really good in the wrap-up report right, right. so when, when you're done you're gonna see the graph and it's gonna look great and you're gonna go back and everyone's gonna be happy except for you won't actually move any product <laughs> so I, I, I think that's like a, that's a that's a big one I think we all sort of need to work together to fix um, and then in terms of a, a quick um, um, anecdote of a initiative that we did in setting the scene. Um, we worked recently with Coca-Cola um, and this was our first time working together and um, we ended up winning the business primarily because of the research that we did. Right um, In setting the scene, that was the differentiator. It was, yes. it was about understanding what the audience was and what the initiative was and then really spending a lot of time understanding that audience specifically. Like those teens, what were their activities, what were they doing outside of home? Um, and the reason I'm not going to go into too much detail on it is because I'm actually talking about it tomorrow morning. <laughs> so please come and join us. <laughs> Ta da! Uh, um, Kate, let's, let's wrap it up with you and yeah. tell us a little bit about I think, KPI. I think there was some finger pointing going on over there. <laughs> um, and I think that's totally fair. Like, yeah, we're like, a, I work at the system. Like, it's a big entity. So you have to ask questions and challenge us and say, like, is that really the KPI you need? Um, what is how? What how am I going to actually help you move the needle on what it is that you're looking for? If it is brand sentiment, or if it is, um, in our case, it was changing the uh, perception of Coca-Cola and food together, and that and reinforcing that pairing. Uh, so I would say just like keep pushing, keep pushing back, and if you don't feel good about it, say no thank you, right? Like yeah. I'm telling you that will go so much further than like a bombed program where I'm like trying to dig myself out of it. If you just say no thank you, I will call you more likely than if we like get, you get a $200,000 RFP. Um, I think one of the programs that I'm most excited about at Coke is Share a Coke, which if you're familiar with is in its, I think, sixth year in the US and probably ninth or tenth year globally and I, I love that program because we always get these RFPs that are give me something never been done before give me something totally outside of the box and why I love that program is you actually have to live in the box right we're not changing the product it's just names on bottles like it's not new it's not different but how do you keep it fresh how do you keep rethinking and pushing yourself to do something different how do you make a better mousetrap using the exact same program which I think is quite intriguing quite um, exciting because everyone's playing outside of the box and there's a lot of things outside the box I'd rather play inside the box there's a lot of white space we still haven't discovered there uh, so that's why I love that I love that program that's great well I want to say thank you to all of you um, yeah. I'm gonna read off the five key questions just so we kind of can crystallize on them and then would love for in the breakout discussions as you kind of talk amongst yourselves you know are they the right questions how can we be starting to solve for some of these things together because you do all sit in different you know spaces in the industry and you're all engaging with partners and clients and you know your agencies every single day um, so if we all start sharing these learnings and kind of making one another accountable there's a ripple effect from that so um, the first question was how are you defining content in the larger story you're trying to tell who is leading and accountable for this effort who is your audience for this why are you coming to us <laughs> and what is the KPI for this program versus what is the KPI for the business overall yeah. so thanks everybody thanks you guys thank you, thank you. Thank you.